fresco clearly shows the birth of Christ. Louis, I can assure you that that is not the solution to this enigma. This fresco's only purpose is to mislead. I know that now. Please, focus on another theme about Christ. We'll have to trust her. Yes, it's definitely a representation of the birth of Christ, but some of the details have flaked away. I can't see any other clues. One thing is for sure, this enigma deals with the life of Jesus, like my mother said. You can see that the paint has come off in parts. Difficult to see what was there, but I can distinguish the letters N-R-I. Nothing more. Why, of course, I-N-R-I. Jesus Nazarenus Rex Yadorum. These initials stand for Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. This is the inscription which appears on the cross at the crucifixion of Jesus. Why, of course, they're part of the initials I-N-R-I that you can find on the cross of Jesus at his crucifixion. If Mortimer deliberately set a trap by showing the birth of Christ, then maybe the solution is the contrary. The death of Christ in that case? Hmm, it looks like there are three types of inscriptions. Clearly, we have names of towns, Arabian numerals, and Roman numerals. These towns have one thing in common. They're all related to the life and death of Jesus. For example, Jordan is the place of the baptism of Christ. There, there are three styles of writing, and I've got three nails. There must be a link. I must surely put in one nail per category. Chapter 19, verse 17. Jesus was crucified on the 8th of Nisan, 3,793, in a place near Jerusalem. The Romans put a crown of thorns on his head. Chapter 19, verse 17. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, on either side, and Jesus in the midst. Done, Louis. I hadn't seen those other wheels. Try connecting the theme to see if it goes all the way. There must surely be a connection between the wheels. There are different icons on this wheel, but it looks like some of them can't be connected to the other wheels. I think I can make out each one of the icons apart from the one covered in blood. Going clockwise from the one I just mentioned, we have the halo that represents the resurrection. The waves represent the baptism of Jesus. It's more difficult to identify the next one. Maybe a crib, and in that case, it's surely linked to the birth of Christ. The red herring that my mother followed. Then, the symbol represents the crown of thorns that Jesus wore during his crucifixion. The dove also represents the baptism certainly another red herring. Then comes the symbol of the Trinity. And finally, the candle that must stand for the Last Supper. Now, given the difference between the number of icons and the number of towns, I think that only one path connects all the wheels with one another. Let's try to connect the theme I've chosen with the rest. Mother, what do you think? As I told you, I didn't get that far. Nevertheless, these icons do represent moments in the life of Christ. This wheel contains several symbols made up of one or two figures and one letter. The highest figure does not exceed 31, and each letter corresponds to a month of the year. A for April, and M for March. I think these symbols must represent a specific date. This wheel represents the different moons. In the occult sciences, we represent the full moon by an X. As for the dark moon, called the new moon, in cults, it's, well, it's often associated with something harmful. The totally black moon corresponds to the new moon. So, going clockwise, we have the waning crescent, the last quarter, 
the waning gibbous, the full moon, the waxing gibbous, the first quarter, and lastly, the waxing crescent. During new moon, the moon is entirely in the shadow. Then, the shadow moves from west to east, meaning left to right, and goes through the following states. Waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, last quarter, waning crescent, and the cycle starts over with the full shadowed new moon. The moon shadow moves from west to east. Seventh of Shaban, 607, first quarter. According to the architect's notes in the armillary sphere, the moon during the crucifixion was a first quarter. That's the one with its left half in the light. To follow the crucifixion theme, I should select the crown of thorns. By following the clues in the Bibles and the architect's notes, the crucifixion took place on the 8th of Nisan 3793, according to the astronomers of that time. That would correspond to March 26th in the year 33 on a modern calendar. I can feel the lever at the bottom. Good luck. I never doubted you, my son. <laughs> 